Your RV's on fire. What are you going to grab? You have one minute to get out. Where's the nearest hospital? And when's the last time you changed your RV air conditioner filters? If all of this is overwhelming your mind, I'm going to show you how to tackle this problem and get yourself organized. Hey, it's Erica from Radar Road Warriors, and in this video, we're going to go over the four checklists you need to go full-time, which will reduce your chances of accidental damage to your rig, RV emergencies, and this is going to save you both time and money and maybe even your life. First is the emergency checklist. Know what you need to grab out of the RV in case you need to evacuate within minutes or seconds. Next is a travel day checklist. This keeps you from forgetting tasks and causing unnecessary damage to your rig. The third is a destination checklist. This is where you research the area before you go and you have key information at your fingertips when you need it. And last is the maintenance checklist. Know what needs to be serviced and when so little issues don't become big problems. This is a lot of work up front, but it's going to save you tons of time in the future, reduce your stress, and it's going to save you from unnecessary damage to your rig and repair bills. If organization is not your thing, just do one checklist at a time and start using it before you move on to the other ones. It will be a lot less overwhelming. And the great news is I put all of the checklists we talk about today down in the description below. They are an Excel document, so you can go down there, download them, edit them, make them your own, and most of the work is done for you. So let's get into it. First, we're going to talk about the emergency checklist. Know the items that you need to quickly grab out of the RV in case you need to evacuate an emergency. An emergency could be a day, it could be minutes, or it could be seconds. We thought of all the items we need to grab and we put them in sections. The top item in each section are the most important and we'll grab them first and depending on how much time we have to evacuate, we'll take more items down the list. Have a plan how you are going to grab the items. Better yet, practice it and know where they are stored and how long it's going to take you to get those items. For example, if you have cats like we do, but you don't use your carrier daily like we do, and instead of keeping it inside your RV in an easy to get to location, you put it underneath in the basement, know how long it takes you to get it out from the basement. So if you only use it like once every six months and it's stacked behind a whole bunch of other totes in the basement, know how long it takes you to take all those totes out, get the cat carrier, put everything back, so this would be a practical solution to get out in a quick manner. Empty out your pillowcase, throw your cat in there, hold it, get to the vehicle. I believe you should practice getting out in case of emergency so everyone knows what they're going to do and where they're going to meet. Just like you did in school when you had fire drills or tornado drills. And I know some of you are sitting here watching this saying there is no way I'm going to practice jumping out the window to see if I can do it. It's not going to happen. Now we heard all the concerns when we owned the dirt car racetrack when we had drivers practice getting out of their car within 12 seconds. That meant removing their five point safety harness, taking off the steering wheel, taking down the window net and getting out. And the drivers would have a whole bunch of issues with it, concerns, complaints about it and say how they're not going to do it, blah, blah, blah. Just insert their issue here. My husband would listen to him and say, well, your fire suit's rated for 12 seconds and it's up to you how long you want to sit in a burning car for. It's your life. You can do it as you wish. Now we're on to the travel day checklist. This keeps you from forgetting to do tasks to make sure you don't cause unnecessary damage to your rig. This checklist is important because you will use it every time you move and each time you change locations you are at risk of getting complacent or forgetting to shut cupboard doors or put the awning in. We have these checklists broken into different sections that way you can spread out the workload in a smart manner. An example is filling up your tow vehicle while it's not attached to your rig so you can easily fit into a gas station. The sections are prepping to leave, departure, and arrival. And some of these we have a lot more details on things that I think I'm going to skip. So anything Steve does that has to do with hooking up the truck to the trailer and hauling it, I put every single detail so if I have to do it, it's step by step and I don't forget anything. Now Steve can come inside the RV and do all my work, no problem. He just needs to follow the checklist. He can get it done. But I cannot easily go outside and do his outside work and connect the truck. So what we did is made videos of the step-by-step -step process of everything that needs to be done. So if something happens to Steve and I have to do all the work myself, I have a video to watch everything that needs to be done because he already did it and he's showing me in the video and talking to me and we're answering questions back and forth. And I have those videos uploaded to my own private playlist and they're on my phone for easy access so I can move the RV if needed in the case of an emergency. Next is a destination checklist. Research the area before you go and have key information at your fingertips. And this is really easy to do while you're researching the area that you're going to go to. You can copy and paste information and fill out the sheet. We include the campgrounds, phone number, address, local hospitals, animal hospitals, recent local events, COVID restrictions, and if there's mobile mechanics in the area and things like that. When we first started, we didn't have this list. 
What made me do it is the first time I received a text message alert on my phone saying these counties need to take immediate shelter. I had no idea what county I was and freaked out. Now I can easily look at my board, pull it up on my phone, see where I am when I'm freaking out. I can find the information within seconds and then start making decisions from there. You can see the rest of the information I add to the list when you download the link in the description below. Once it's done, I save it by the name of the state and city, and then I keep it on file. And if we ever go back to the same location, I can pull up the list, and 90% of the information is the same, and I just have a little bit of updating to do. I print two copies of this list. I put one up on the board, the other one goes into the truck, and then I also take a screenshot of it, save it on my phone, and then I send it to Steve, my mom, and his mom. And that way they have all the information of what we plan on doing, the dates we are gonna be there, the truck that we have, our VIN numbers, and if they need to contact some type of emergency services, they have the correct information to give to them. Hey, if you didn't know, we make educational videos for our viewers, so if you're interested in this type of content, consider subscribing. And now on to the last one, the maintenance checklist. Know what needs to be serviced and when, so little issues don't become big problems. I can see why weekend warriors have issues with their RV. You're busy all week, you can't wait to go camping, you have to pack the RV, you only have a couple days to go enjoy your time at the campsite, then you have to come back, unpack, get ready for your work week, and then you work all week, and you don't have time to inspect your RV with a fine tooth comb. Then one day a crack forms on the roof in the silicone, water starts getting in it, it starts dripping down the wall, and then eight months later you start noticing a soft spot, and you're like, mm, okay, this was weird, you still go camping with it, in a year or two down the road, you have a whole area of your floors rotted out and your slide falls out. And then you say, this RV is a piece of junk, and now you're really upset because you want to go camping and you can't because your RV needs to be fixed. We researched what maintenance needs to be done to RVs. We watched YouTube videos, looked up articles, downloaded other RVers checklist, and then we went through our manual to see what it recommended. We broke everything down into weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly tasks, and who would be doing each of these tasks. We laminated our checklist and mark on it with a dry eraser marker whenever the task is completed and then we'll erase the list and start over when it's time. You can also put your checklist inside a plastic sheet protector and then tape the edge closed instead of laminating it. If you are living in your RV full time or close to full time, I suggest putting it somewhere where it's easy access front of mind so it's there to remind you to do the maintenance. Now you're not maintaining a sticks and bricks house and you have a lot more time than the weekend warrior, so you do have time to go around and do all the little maintenance and make sure your sealant isn't cracking, you don't have leaks, your screws are not coming out of the wall. Remember, every time you take your RV down the road, it's like it's going through an earthquake, so things are gonna come loose. And there's a very good possibility things are gonna come loose every single time you travel down the road, depending on how rough the roads were and how long your drive was. Now I have some great bonus tips for you. Make yourself an information center with a magnetic dry erase board and a cork board. You can use this and put all the paperwork the campground gives you, write reminder notes, Wi-Fi passwords, and store all of your checklists in one spot. And make sure it's in a location that's easy to see and access. All of my boards are hung up with command strips. Next bonus tip is have a folder with all your information. We have our checklist. We have one copy of each of the checklists laminated. That way we can use a little dry erase marker, put it on, and keep using it. And we also have some printed copies in case we want to use that. And with that, make an RV dimension and spec sheet. I always have to refer back to the sheet when we're boondocking to remember how much water we hold, our overall size when we book campsites, or how much we're allowed to weigh. And I also have a little sheet that I keep in the truck that way, if we're going under overpasses or on the phone with the campground, we can quickly refer to the information. Now that you know what all the checklists are for, make sure you go down into the YouTube description, download your copy, save them to your computer, make the edits that are appropriate for your RV and your needs, and then make sure you're using those on your RV trips. And if you want more educational RV videos like this, you're going to want to check out our new to RV playlist next. You can also find that link down in the description as well. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.